buy these powerful Yu-Gi-Oh cards yes. before they skyrocket in price. <laughs> My guy, I've been doing this for a long, long time. And any time I ever get down in video views, I gotta go to all reliable. Yep, yep. Oh, reliable. Boom. In all seriousness, today, Big Dog, I'm going to be telling you about some cards that I'm going to be investing in. Our very last video, we saw some cards go up in price just like I predicted. This time around, we're going to be keeping that trend. Cards like Primitive Planet Paralino, Fantastical Dragon Phantasme, Rescue Ace Hydrant all went up in price. And there's still some more from that video that you should check out in case you didn't know. And of course, Big Dog, as per usual, my Patreon did get this a little bit early as a special thank you for helping me with my editors. Without further ado, let's jump on in. So, new Yu-Gi-Oh format, new me. I have to say, with Unchained completely dominating the Yu-Gi-Oh meta, at least up until now. That, that, that. All right, go get it. Sheesh, Unchained is crazy. There are gonna be cards that players are going to be looking at, not only to counter that deck, but also some really sneaky good cards because of the new Age of Overlord set. And today, big dog, I'm gonna be spilling the beans on some of them. So if you don't like me, then maybe you should have a change of heart. Literally. Now, Change Art is a pretty powerful Yu-Gi-Oh card, allowing you to take one monster your opponent controls and use it for your own. And the reason why I would say that this card is absolutely bonkers is because it's really good against Unchained. If you use this particular card to take your opponent's DDD Wave King Caesar, then they can't use their effect of Yama. And if they use the effect of Unchained Soul of Rage, you can then use DDD Wave King Caesar to stop the Soul of Rage. Holy crap that's good some players would argue that cards like triple tactics talent would be a better card and in some situations it is but you have to keep in mind that your opponent has to activate a monster effect during your main phase of triple tactics to trigger triple tactics talent whereas change your heart the only thing you have to do is just activate it i think soon enough players are going to start taking notice and picking up change your heart and the best thing about it is that it does have an ultra rare pin from magnificent mavens that's fairly cheap i would take advantage of that as that is the cheapest copy of change your heart and a really nice rarity but there's also those other copies of change your heart you know like the metal raiders one the original Metal Raiders first deck, Change of Heart, is a collector's piece. I think that version, as well as the Secret Rare being the highest rarity for Change of Heart, will be the cards that players will gravitate towards when Change of Heart becomes that good of a Yu-Gi-Oh card. And there's also the possibility of it coming off the ban list, but we're not going to talk about that. Y'all not ready for that. We ain't got a ban list talk until later. But Change of Heart isn't the only powerful spell card that I would be looking out for right now. Because of the banning of Cash Tiara's Heart, Yu-Gi-Oh is in a healthy spot right now. I know what you guys are thinking. Graveyard, 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 graveyard. We have our graveyards. This is true for the good and for the bad. Now, depending on how you feel, there's gonna be decks like Tier Limit that are gonna be really popular. Then there's also decks that are very graveyard reliant, like Super Heavy Samurai and Solomon Great, which are very fine rogue options, but will also be popular. Now, a really good friend of mine and a very good Yu-Gi-Oh player put me on Marionette Might. This card was really good against the Unchained matchup because it allows you to take control of your opponent's Unchained monsters, similar to Change of Heart. But also, Big Dog, if you just so happen to have Zombie World, which branded as a deck that can use, then you can take any of your opponent's monsters. I personally didn't take into the Marionette Might hype train, but Top Deck TJ did, and right now they are currently about a dollar a piece. I personally think that Marionette Might is just a little bit more situational than cards like Change of Heart, and that's mainly because Change of Heart can be searched with Triple Tactics Thrust. Eh. But if your particular strategy can actually play to the strengths of this card, then you might want to consider picking it up, especially if it's only a dollar. But TJ actually got my brain thinking. While we are here buying Marionette Might, we might as well buy Electric Virus and Puppet Plant. Now, Puppet Plant is 100% a card that you should probably consider using towards the future, but Electric Virus is actually really good at taking dragons and machines, and I can think of a strategy that does dragons, and I can think of a good strategy that does machines. Bro, if you really can't think of the best dragon deck in the game right now, then you're really down bad. Obviously, it's the Crimson King. <laughs> it is I, Black Atlas. 
In all seriousness, Electrovirus could be used against the Resonator Red Dragon strategy, but it also can be used against Dragon Link, which is still a pretty good deck, and can be used against Rescue Ace. So long as Rescue Ace Hydrant doesn't have another uh, Rescue Ace monster on the field, you can take their Hydrant, which is actually pretty huge. I think both Vision Resonator and Soul Resonator are pretty good Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Soul Resonator allows you to add any level four or lower Fiend monster from your deck to your hand any of them off the top of my head i can already think of several good fiend Yu-Gi-Oh cards that are generic there's bone arch fiend there's the labyrinth monsters there's even a centric arch fiend talk about that one in a second the only drawback to soul resonator is that if you use its effect you can only special summon dark dragon synchro monsters from your extra deck but if you're playing a deck that doesn't special summon from the extra deck then it has no drawback whatsoever kind of like if you're playing i don't know labyrinth or something Vision Resonator allows you to be able to special summon it to your side of the field if a level 5 monster exists, and then allows you to search a card that mentions Red Dragon Archfiend when it's sent to the graveyard. My guy! I know that right now there isn't a great generic speller trap that mentions Red Dragon Archfiend, but just the fact that this card is a different variation of Assault Synchron really makes me look at it in a whole different light. Backtracking back to Soul Resonator, Archfiend Eccentric is a card that can be searched with it, but it's also just a really good card. You guys remember when I was talking about how Castier or Fenrir is just a modern day Cyber Dragon? Well, Archfiend Eccentric is just a modern day Exiled Force. It's also a Mystical Space Typhoon, so there you have it. The card can also be searched with Archfiend Eris, which just happens to be a 10 year old Yu-Gi-Oh card and also a card that can be summoned with Tour God. So I'm just saying, and Archfiend Harris and Eccentric has been on a lot of players' minds. I actually found it out from a Squidio, so go ahead and check out my man Squidward if if you want to see his video. His name's not Squidward, is it? Dog, what is his name? I had a complete brain fart. Squiddies, check out Squiddies. He has good information. <laughs> because Castura Rise Heart is now gone, rest in peace. There's gonna have to be some cards to be able to fill its void. Of course, Dimension Shifter is the first card that comes to a lot of players' minds, but not everybody can afford Dimension Shifter. Mommy, can I get Dimension Shifters? We got Dimension Shifters at home. Fortunately enough, the home version of Dimension Shifter is DD Crow, which I think is a really good hand trap right now. Cards like DD Crow, Ghost Bell, and Skullmeister fit that niche point of being able to hit some of the popular graveyard reliant decks without playing Dimension Shifter because not every single deck can use it. I think all three of those cards are 100% worth looking into and Skullmeister can actually be searched to Soul Resonator, so make it himself useful. Speaking of useful, players are starting to figure out the utility of Destructive Daruma Cannon. This card flips all monsters face down like a Book of Eclipse, but then gets rid of Link Monsters, something that Book of Eclipse can't do. And the best thing about Daruma Cannon is that it forces the player to get rid of the card, meaning that if a card has If that card is to the graveyard, but you're a pink card, it won't be able to gain its effect, similar to Evenly Match. I think this is about the third or fourth time I've told you guys to seriously look at Daruma Cannon. I don't even care about the reprint. I would pick up the reprinted version of the card because I think it's that good. You really don't want to be caught lacking on your Mac and when it comes to getting rid of your opponent's cards, and that's why I also think that Book of Eclipse is a card that you should pick up, especially if you're a Link player. The good thing about Book of Eclipse is that it's very unfair. If you are a Link-based deck and you go first, Book of Eclipse stops all other decks and keep your Link monsters face up, unlike Daruma Cat. Going second, I mean, you can use it to help break a board since you a Link deck, you more than likely got some big choky Link monster to take care of the rest of the cards, right? Right? You got it, right? Don't, don't, don't be messing with me. I still believe that it is a crime that secret rare copies of Book of Eclipse are only $2 a copy. Those are 100% cards that I would be picking up right now. And lastly, big dog, there is a card that the elite players are looking at right now, especially if you are playing Tier Limit. Back in my day, Tier Limit players would use King of the Swamp to search polymerization and then fusion summon with their tier limit cards and have a polymerization. Those days are dead. What tier limit players have been doing now is actually using Beast King of the Swamp because it is a level four monster that you can normal summon to your side of the field and make powerful monsters like Abyss Dweller to be able to stop graveyards, who would have guessed, and Time Thief Redoer because uh, it's a good guard. It also serves the exact same purpose as King of the Swamp the only difference is that it can't search polymerization, but to be fair, who's playing polymerization in the Guardian Chimera when we don't want to destroy cards anyways? I am, because I like Chimeras. I also just so happen to have dropped the ball on Abyss Dweller as well. 100% a card that you guys should be picking up because um, it's a good card. I think people genuinely forgot about Abyss Dweller, but it's kind of fair 
because Cash Tuna Riseheart literally did gatekeep the graveyard for a good six months. Hello, baby, I'm coming out of jail. It's been six long months. Graveyard's about to get touched. Of course, big dog, I really do appreciate it if you're using my TCG player link down below in the description. And if you wanna see more amazing videos, you already know what to do. Be sure to check out these videos so I can catch you on the next one.